Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. The glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my rain kind of quit, and I decided before I get seriously into my work day to go ahead and record Colossians chapter 3. Well, this is interesting because I think I'm in Philippians, so it's going to be hard to do, isn't it? Well, what happened to it? I didn't quite get there, I guess. <laughs> Okay, we're actually in Colossians now. The Christian life. The Christian life. Well, we always need a review of that, no matter how long you've been living for the Lord. The Christian life. What are we supposed to be doing to follow Jesus Christ? Praise God. Let's really give it our all here. You know, you want to finish well. And Jesus is the author and finisher of our faith. He's going to help us. He's going to help us do this well. But what helps us is staying in this word. I stress it. This is what I'm doing. Uh, this is uh, the truth. And we are living in days of deception. So, I use the example before those... Uh, People that work in the bank all of the time, they handle the real money all of the time. When something comes across, they feel it. They just know, oops, something may be a little bit wrong there. Of course, they have technology to identify, but um, in past years, you handle something enough, you know what's real and what isn't. So that's the way with the Word of God. You handle this enough, you will recognize when someone's saying the wrong thing. They don't have to be false teachers. They could just not be there yet, some of them. But it's up to you. You are responsible for getting this word in you and for getting understanding and wisdom from the Lord. Chapter 3 of Colossians. If ye then be risen with Christ... Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Praise God. We are looking to be, we are looking for the appearing of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are looking to be made like him. Verse 5, mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Mortify, kill it. You've got to kill your flesh. You know what I'm saying. We need to be dead to sin now. We were dead in sin, but now we need to be dead to sin. Kill these things. Fornication, uncleanness inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. You know, if you love mammon, you love things, and you don't love God, you're in idolatry. Verse 6, For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond, nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Christ is everything. It's all in him. Praise God. Verse 12. 
put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another, if any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. You know, often we're told in the New Testament to abound more and more in love. And, uh, you know, as I examine myself these days, it's often in my prayer, help me to love more. Don't let me be one of those whose love grows cold as iniquity abounds in this these lawless days that we're in now. But help us, help us with the love, Lord. Help us to keep feeling merciful to people and to keep loving people. Verse 14, and above all these things put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. So letting peace rule in our hearts. How can we have peace in these storms? Well, Jesus illustrated that when the storm came up in the boat and the disciples became fearful and said, Lord, look here, you need to be helping us here. And Jesus spoke to the storm. And we can speak to the storm. You know, when I've had a storm come up, I have stepped outside. I speak to it. I ask the Lord to protect me also, to protect my family when physical storms come. But we have storms where the enemy takes time to target you, specifically spiritually, and you have to take authority over it and praise the Lord through it to keep peace in your heart. Be thankful. He lifts us up in spirit when we lift him up in praise. You enter his courts with praise and thanksgiving. That's how you enter. You begin to feel the presence of the Lord, and you will have peace in your heart. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So, I don't have a beautiful singing voice. I'm often croaky. I go really low. But the Lord often gives me a song that he just wants me to sing a few lines of to direct your attention to what he's speaking to us or to get you in a praise moment before we read the word. Not because I have a lovely voice, but... It says, singing with grace. <laughs> so we just call on the grace of the Lord in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. And um, husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them children he's he's getting everyone in this children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord you know our children bless their hearts pray for the children in this world children you may have parents that are still living wrong you may you may know jesus and they don't when they make wrong decisions, are you to be rebellious? No. You know, you've got to pray for your family, pray for your parents, and obey them in the Lord. This is well-pleasing unto the Lord. I saw a little boy go before the school board the other day. I can't remember exactly. He's an American, but I don't remember what state or whatever, but he got in trouble for a t-shirt. It said, there are only two genders. So he got pulled aside by someone in authority in the school that he needed to take that uh, shirt off that was causing problems. And he, he did not want, he was respectful, but he said he did not want to take that off. And they called his father, and his father supported him in this. And uh, the little boy, I watched the 
clip of him going before the school board. He's like in seventh grade, and uh, he was defending his rights for freedom of speech. And he did an awesome job. I know a young man that age had to be nervous going before the adult. But, uh, you know, he's holding the line there. He has courage in his heart. Praise God. Praise God. But there's so many children. Somebody's instilled in him that there's a right and a wrong way to go. But many children in our world today are being confused. They don't know right from wrong, some of them. And uh, we need to be ministering where we can, speaking truth, speaking what is right, that the word of God is still forever settled in heaven. The word of God is truth. What does the word say about all these situations? Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Verse 21, Fathers, provoke not your children to anger, lest they be discouraged. There's a right and a wrong way to discipline our children and to be gentle and firm. And we don't. We don't belittle our children. We don't do power things over our children. This is so important. I know we just, we get that baby the first time and there was no handbook on how to do this right that we were handed. But this word of God, it's instructing us. Train your children in the way they should go and when they're old, they will not depart. Here's training. Fathers, provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged. Do you want to discourage your children? No, we want to bless them and we want to train them. Verse 22, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. So think of servants as you're just an employee out there working for someone. You're paid to do a job. Whether the boss is watching you or not, do a good job as unto the Lord. Verse 23, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Remember who we're really serving. It is Jesus we are serving. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. So a final very serious warning there to us. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Well, praise the Lord. Have a beautiful day in the Lord. Acts 2.38, if you need to give your heart to the Lord. I love you. Jesus loves you more.